So good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So in the last lecture we talked about total synthesis of prostaglandins by uh, Professor Corey and today we will talk about two more total synthesis of prostaglandins, one by Professor Gilbert Stott, the other by Professor Carl Johnson. So first let us start with uh, uh, Stark synthesis of PGF2 alpha. As you know, this is the structure of uh, PGF2 uh, alpha. The key reactions which Professor Starker used in the synthesis of uh, prostaglandin PGF2 alpha is uh, radical cyclization to form uh, the F5 membered ring and followed by trapping that radical, that 5 XO radical. 5 XO radical cyclization followed by formation of another radical which is trapped by their acceptor. So, this is a key reaction uh, in the synthesis of uh, PGF by star and also you could do this reaction on a 1 gram scale and the next one is intramolecular thermal rearrangement which later called as Brooks rearrangement also was used as the key reaction. Okay. How he has done the retrosynthesis? This idea was if you break this double bond, if you break this double bond, on the left hand side you will get aldehyde and the right hand side you will get the corresponding triphenyl phosphonium bromide. So that you can do a Wittig reaction to get the cis double bond. Okay. Now once you have this aldehyde, aldehyde and alcohol if you combine the alcohol will attack the aldehyde to form a lactol and the lactol if you can protect. So, that is the precursor for PGF2 alpha. At the same time you can also keep this as carbonyl and later one can reduce it to get the corresponding allylic alcohol as required in the natural product. Now the next step is the real key reaction as I said the radical cyclization followed by trapping of the resultant radical. So, what he did was he prepared this halo compound. Okay. Now, this can undergo a 5 XO radical cyclization on to this double bond that will generate a radical at this carbon. Okay. Now, if you add an acceptor like this, okay, so that can add to this triple bond. So, that will straight away give you this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay. That was the original plan, but let us see how he has achieved uh, this particular transformation. And this can be you know uh, this 5 member ring can be obtained from this diol and this can be obtained from cyclopentatide. Okay. If you look at uh, the earlier synthesis of PGF2 alpha by E. J. Corey, they are also the starting material was cyclopentadiol. Okay. Now, let us see how he got this diol from cyclopentadiene. So, take cyclopentadiene and this is a known transformation and do a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition with oxygen. Okay. So, why photochemical conditions is required is normally oxygen is in triplet state, is not it? So, it has to come to ground state. So, that is why photochemistry is used. And since you use thio area, after this the OO bond also gets cleaved under the same condition to get this corresponding diol. Okay. But this is uh, you know meso compound, one can easily resolve, and for that you first protect this diol as diacetate. This diacetate enzymatically can be selectively hydrolyzed. One of the acetates can be selectively hydrolyzed to get enantiomerically enriched one alcohol other one acetate. So, this was done successfully with pig liver esterase to get this corresponding you can see one of the hydroxyl group one of the acetate is hydrolyzed to 
hydroxyl group, the other one is acetate. Now, this is a this is an optically active compound. Okay. So, he took this compound, then treated with TBS chloride so that you can protect this free hydroxyl group, followed by hydrolysis of the acetate with catalytic amount of potassium cyanide and ethanol at room temperature. Now, you get the corresponding allylic alcohol. Next step is treatment of this allylic alcohol with ethyl vinyl ether in the presence of N iodosuccinamide. See what happens when you treat with ethyl vinyl ether and N iodosuccinamide, you get this combo. Okay. So, you can say iodonium ion. Okay. Now, this will open this. So, what you get is corresponding OET plus. Now, the lone pair on the oxygen will attack and neutralize the positive charge. So, that will give you this compound. Okay. So, that is the precursor required for the key radical cyclization that is 5 XO radical cyclization followed by trapping the resultant radical. So, what happens? You do this reaction with catalytic amount of aza bis isobutyl and tributyl tin chloride and stoichiometric amount of sodium cyanoborohydride. So, it forms as I said the radical attacks here and it forms a radical at this carbon. Now, you do the trapping with tertiary butyl isocyanide. That means, this radical which is formed here attacks the carbon and this C n bond breaks. So, what you get is the corresponding cyanide. Okay. So, now you can see you have made a 5 membered ring and also you have introduced a cyanide group. Okay. Once you have the cyanide, then as you know you can reduce it with dibol to get the aldehyde at low temperature you know minus 78 you can reduce the cyanide to aldehyde then carry out Wadsworth Immons modification of Wittig reaction to get the trans double bond or E double bond. So, this is what you get. So, what is left now? You have to reduce this to alcohol, hydrolyze this lactol ethyl ether to lactol and do the Wittig reaction and followed by removal of this TBS group will give PGF to alpha. So, he, he also attempted this same thing by a second method where the acceptor is different. Okay. So, what he did? He took the radical precursor and did the same condition except that acceptor was this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Earlier what he did, he wanted to check how it works. So, he tried with tertiary butyl isocyanide. So, he could introduce the cyanide and then reduction of cyanide you got aldehyde. Once you have aldehyde of course, you can homologate further. So, he wanted to directly trap that radical with this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Did he do? Yes, he could successfully do. After that, when you heat it, what will happen? oxygen has got better affinity towards silicon than carbon. Okay. So, when you heat it, this oxygen attacks this silicon and followed by breaking of CSI bond gives you the corresponding enol ether. So, this is also called Brooks rearrangement. So, ox the migration of silicon from carbon to oxygen is called Brooks rearrangement. So, now when you have enol TMS, it is very easy to introduce a double bond by treating with palladium acetate, is not it? So, very famous uh, oxidation reaction. So, that gives the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, now you can see both ways you could get this corresponding enone. Once you have this enone, reduce with S vinyl. Okay. So, that will reduce the carbonyl group and you will get one isomer as a major product, you got the alcohol, then 
treat with aqueous HCl. So, aqueous HCl will hydrolyze the lactol ether to corresponding lactol and at the same time your TBS group also will be cleaved you get the corresponding hydroxyl group. Now you do the Wittig with the 5 carbon unit having a carboxylic acid at the terminal. So, you get PGF2 alpha directly. So, overall if you look at this synthesis, so this synthesis was done in only 7 steps ok, done only in 7 steps start, starting from the cyclo uh, the acetoxy or TBS protected cyclopentanol which is a known compound from cyclopentadiene which is a known compound from cyclopentadiene and this was achieved in 7 steps. Then the next key step was the 5XO radical cyclization followed by trapping of the radical with acceptance. Okay. Now, we will move to the third total synthesis of prostaglandins by Carl Johnson's group. So, here the key reaction was 1,4 addition to cyclopentenone followed by quenching the enolate with an electrophile. So, the two side chains are introduced in one step via 1,4 addition followed by trapping of the enolate. Okay. Basically what they have done is a substituted cyclopentenone was taken and then these two side chains were attached. Okay. Let us see how they have thought about from retrosynthetic point of view. So, they thought this can be obtained from the cyclopentenone having these two hydroxyl groups which are protected. The idea is this vinyl lithium species or vinyl copper, vinyl lithium species followed by converting into copper add to this cyclopentenone in a 1,4 fashion and quench with this electrophile. Okay. And this can be obtained from this, I will come to that how it is done and again the starting material looks almost same as what Albert Stark has used. Okay. And that can be obtained from cyclopentadiene. So, overall if you look at the 3 synthesis which we discussed for the total synthesis of prostaglandins, all the synthesis started with the 5 membered that is cyclopentadiene, commercially available cyclopentadiene. Of course, cyclopentadiene is not commercially available as such, it is available as uh, cyclopentadiene dimer, you have to crack it, that is you have to make sure that it undergoes a retro 4 plus 2 cycloaddition to get cyclopentadiene. So, how he did? So, there are two ways he prepared the chiral starting material. The first method is almost similar to what Gilbert Stark has done. A 4 plus 2 cycloaddition of cyclopentadiene with oxygen followed by reduction of OO bond with thioia, you get the diol and the diol was protected as the diacetate and from here he changed its route. So, what he did? He did a dihydroxylation. So, when the dihydroxylation happened as you know the dihydroxylation both the hydroxyl group will come opposite to these two acetates. These two acetates are beta. So, the hydroxyl will come from alpha and the resultant diol was protected as acetonide by treating with acetone with a catalytic amount of paratolivine sulfonic acid. Now, you hydrolyze, so both acetate, you get a diol. This diol upon oxidation, okay, one of the hydroxyl gets oxidized and once it is oxidized to get the ketone, the other hydroxyl group is nothing but it is an aldol, beta hydroxy ketone. So, it undergoes elimination under the in the presence of trifluoroacetic acid. So, directly you get the cyclopentenone but this is racemic in nature. Okay. This racemic cyclopentenone can be resolved with this sulfoxamine to get the only the required one. You also can get the other one uh, equal amount but what you want is this one with that you can proceed further for the enantio selective total synthesis of prostaglandin. And one can also use the diacetate for preparing the same. So, you can use an enzyme 
to selectively hydrolyze this acetate and oxidize. So, the alcohol will get oxidized to get the ketone and automatically and in the presence of sulfuric acid it undergo elimination to get this cup. So, there are two ways one can make this cyclopentenone and this is the way you know normally optical resolution is done and only problem is the 50 percent with the other configuration you cannot use it further because that will not give the naturally occurring prostaglandin ok. So, you go with what you require. The second method so that is why you know the second method was used in the second method which was developed by Hudlicky. So, that involved dihydroxylation of an aromatic compound. So, this microbiological process started with tolibin commercially available